Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. Microsoft's new Windows Admin Center was launched in 2019 and I would like to take a look at how to use this tool effectively for troubleshooting clients and servers. Windows Admin Center provides components to allow you to connect to servers, to clients, to cluster management. It has Azure components, allows you to connect to your Azure components and infrastructure. But bottom line, every tool that we need has to help us solve problems. Windows Admin Center is not eliminating the need for, say, the old MMC admin tools that we use for Active Directory. I still have to go back and use many of these tools to fix or solve a problem that I have or make a configuration. I can't seem to leave my old Active Directory users and computers. This is just my favorite tool when I deal with Active Directory. If your environment still uses Server Manager, it's a great tool. I never fell in love with Server Manager. It always failed to do things that I needed it to do. But a lot of people make this thing really work for them, and it is not a replacement for Server Manager. Windows Admin Center just complements everything you're already using. I think my most favorite feature of the Windows Admin Center is the ability to manage Windows Server cores so easily. With a click of a button, I'm inside my Windows Server core. I've got a GUI interface, a dashboard into what's going on with that server and all the various tools that I need to manage it and solve problems. It's a free install. Its installation is less than 60 megabytes. It's very lightweight. It does not require any agents whatsoever. It leverages the Windows Remote Management System. You can still continue to use remote server administration tools or RStat. It's going to eliminate your need to do remote desktop to do management of your servers. You can see the tools that it's providing me include components for Azure. What I love is that the tools change based on the device that I connect. So if I have a device that I'm connecting that has Hyper-V, then Hyper-V related tools will show up on that dashboard. When I connect to my Active Directory domain controller, it actually now has tools that allow me to manage my Active Directory. I can use the Windows Admin Center to manage both my domain component, my domain devices, as well as non-domain devices. I can log on as a local administrator or alternative credentials or my do domain credentials. Now the Windows Admin Center is really an HTML5 web interface with PowerShell engine on the back end. Now everything you do in the Windows Admin Center is being run by PowerShell. So if I come up and I want to connect to this particular workstation, I can come up to this PowerShell symbol and I can pull all the PowerShell script that made that action happen. I can actually take it and create my own PowerShell scripts using it. In this presentation, I have done a standalone install. You can also do a gateway install. With a standalone install on a Windows 11 platform or Windows 10, I can connect to servers, clients, and cluster manager. If I set it up on a gateway install, you can see I have a little bit more flexibility, a few more features. I can do the hyper-converged cluster manager as well as a failover cluster manager. If you're new to Windows Admin Center, you just click that question mark in the corner of the browser and you get quick links to Microsoft documentation. Now target systems for the Windows Admin Center were basically Windows Server 2008 R2 and later Windows 10 and 11. All right, I've got my Windows 11 machine and I've installed Windows Admin Center. Let's go ahead and add 
our client. I'm going to hit add and we can see I can install servers or Azure Stack hyperconverged infrastructure. And all that is, is simply means you've bought proprietary hardware from HP, Dell. You've got Azure running on it and all that equipment is sitting in your premise, your data center. That's what that is. We also have the option of connecting PCs. We have server clusters. We can even create clusters can reach out to Azure and connect a VM back into our Windows Admin Center. Let's come up and add a PC. And I can either enter an IP address or a host name. I can use a pre-configured list that is in the CSV format or a text format based on Microsoft's format directions. I can also go into searching Active Directory and simply find whatever I'm looking for here and then populate it into the Windows Admin Center. I'm gonna see if I can browse it. So I'm gonna type in the name of my server, which is AROC and hit enter and it's going to search on the network. Now, if your firewalls are up, you may not find it this way. You may wanna to go to Active Directory and search it that way. Looks like it found it and I'm just waiting for it to connect. Now it's validating the name. Now it gives me the option. If you notice, there's a fully qualified domain name here and it's really ugly. You don't want a fully qualified domain name like this, but this is my domain name. And so when I have my computers with their fully qualified domain name, they're six miles long, but notice it gives me the option. I can add it with just the ASRock designation. So I'm gonna say, Let's go ahead and add it to the console without all the extra stuff. And so it's gonna go in and I can immediately recognize that PC by its name. You can see the ones below are all with their fully qualified domain name, which makes my interface pretty busy. I have installed Windows Admin Center on my Windows 11 PC in what's known as a standalone mode. This gives me a lot of functionality and a lot of feature set. Now, of course, you know it runs phenomenally in Windows Edge, obviously, but you can run it also in Firefox and you can also run it in Chrome. Now, I haven't tested both of the other browsers to verify that everything works, but the basic homepage will come up. Now I have used some of the really large enterprise style management platforms. I use the semantic management platform. In fact, I helped train our school district on this particular platform. I've had experience with SSCM and it's a beautiful piece of software, except it really requires a lot of engineering skills, a lot of hardware, a lot of software, and some really smart people to keep it working. Now, the Windows Admin Center is not SSCM, but it brings to the table for the small and medium business enough features, enough functionality, a very powerful management and troubleshooting tool for those type of organizations. So one of the ways that you can multitask and operate on more than one computer or server at one time is just simply open up a second tab. So I'm going to open up this particular physical machine and I have it in one tab of the browser. And I'm gonna go ahead up to the Windows Admin Center section here, open up another tab, come down and I wanna take a look at my domain controller. So by coming up, in the Windows Admin Center and launching a new tab, I can continue to work on multiple computers at the same time. Let's come back to my physical box, ASRock. And what I see now, I can restart, I can shut down, I can edit the computer ID, I can refresh my screen. The things that I want to know, what is it on the domain? What is the domain? What operating system? How much memory is installed? Disk space, free space, processors, now, if you'll notice, you have this manufactured and model, and it says to be filled by OEM. You can add a HP extension or a Dell extension to your console, which will actually allow them to populate this kind of information. Let's keep on scrolling. All the things that I want to see, I see how many users are logged on, uptime, how many network cards. I immediately see CPU utilization, how many processes, how many threads that particular workstation is involved in right now, memory, network cards in this 
this case, this host is hosting Hyper-V. I can also see the various disks that are inside this PC. So this is a great dashboard for problem solving and working with a client on why their machine is not working the way it should. Now, one of the downsides is if you're using this tool to investigate how many apps are on the PC and you're going across a slow network or you're connecting to a slow laptop, this could be slow getting this information. So just be aware of that. Once you get all the apps for that particular PC, you could see it's very, very nice. It allows you to even remove some of these applications. Now, one thing I really like is you can look at additional features have been installed on that device. So when I click on features, I can see what additional Windows features have or have not been installed. That is sweet. I also have the ability to take a feature that they don't have, let's say a user, a developer needs containers, and enable that feature and install it right here from my Windows Admin Console. I've demonstrated how we add devices to our Windows Admin Center, but we can also remove devices just as easily. Let's say I want to remove this active computer from the console. I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna check this box right there and go ahead and say remove. And it says, do you wanna remove it? And boom, it's gone. So you can see if I have multiple copies of Windows Admin Center in my support environment, they could be populated with very different populations of devices, servers, etc. They could all have the same ones. Each standalone copy of Windows Admin Center is very flexible. You can populate it with whatever you want and configure it however you want, irregardless of other installs that you have in your location. Let's quickly take a look at the tools that populate based on the device that you've put in Admin Center. ASRock is a physical device that's running Hyper-V and it's actually running my domain controller. Let's take a look at it. We're going to connect and we're going to look at the tools that show up for this particular physical device that's running Hyper-V. I can see some of my Azure components. I'm going to sl slide down. You can see devices, events, file, files and file sharing, firewalls, local and user groups, Microsoft's Defender for Cloud if you purchase that license, networks, performance monitor, PowerShell, processes registry. You can see a lot of cool things. As we get down down here, it allows me to see my virtual machines because this particular physical box is running Hyper-V and is running virtual machines. And look at this, I can even work with my virtual switches. Anyone that works with Hyper-V knows that virtual switches are a pain. And a lot of times you have to blow them away, rebuild them because something goes wrong and you've got two or three virtual machines that can't connect to the network. So you even have virtual switch capability to monitor, edit, change, and do the things you need to do for those network components of Hyper-V. Here I can see my virtual machines and I can see a lot of the basic information about each virtual machine, which is really helpful. All of them are running. I can see their state. I can see how many CPUs are assigned to them. I can see the CPU usage, how much memory, etc. So it's really handy, a great dashboard for quickly looking at the status of that device. And a lot of times helping you zero in on some of the problems. When I look at my storage tool, I can see how many drives. I can even see the type of hardware hard drive that is in that particular physical box. Here I can see all my services. I can look at my scheduled tasks. And again, you don't get complete unfettered access to these features and functions, but you get enough to do 90% of the troubleshooting and configuration that you need to do via a web browser. I will actually tell you, the more I used Windows Admin Center, the more I was surprised at how much I could do using an HTML5 browser and PowerShell on the back end. I was pretty impressed. Keep in mind, one of the downsides to a management tool like this, if you're not on a local area network with fast networking, relatively good performance devices, things like pulling up the apps on the PC. If you are on a slow link connecting to a slow laptop in a user's home, this could be, you could go get a cup of coffee, maybe two cups of coffee, and go through a box of donuts before this populated. So this is one of the biggest drawbacks to this type of tool is the network and the speed of the device that you're querying. Under devices, we could see all of our hardware. We're actually seeing a device manager of a sorts, and we see all of our, our hardware 
and we're able to disable a device, hardware device on that PC, and we also have the ability to update a driver. So this is nice. I haven't tested it. I don't know exactly how well it does all of this, but it's there and we will check it out. Now I went into the hardware devices and I've selected the remote audio and I'm going to go ahead and say I want to update the device. We'll just see what happens here. Of course, it's going to Microsoft update service to see is there a better driver online. My gut feeling is it's going to come back and say you've got the most up to date driver. And so it did give me a notification in the console that the most up-to-date driver was already there, which I suspected. Now, one disadvantage that I see here in hardware is that I can't remove a device. Like I can go in Device Manager and say, I just want to remove this piece of hardware and its drivers and associated registry settings, reboot the computer and let it repopulate, add the driver, reconfigure the registry, because many times that solves a hardware problem. We don't have that feature here. It does give us access to Microsoft Events. We all know that Microsoft Event Viewer is pathetic. You almost have to seriously look at some type of an event management system to seriously manage and secure today's servers and devices. Uh, Microsoft's event manager is just way behind times. You're just going to have to go to a third party tool and find some serious tools that can do a better job of bringing critical events, auditing information to the forefront, remove the event noise out of the picture and let you see what is really going on, what is generating events that you really need to pay attention to. That does not happen with Microsoft Event Viewer. Now, another area of the Windows Admin Center that I was very impressed with was the file and sharing. You can do a lot of things. Now, obviously you're restricted based on NTFS permissions as to what you can do, but this tool gives you just about anything you want to do in terms of files and folders. As always, when we're dealing with client desktop data, be very, very cognizant of your organization's policies on data or information files or folders that you, that are confidential to the company. So just keep in mind, this is a powerful tool and you have access based on NTFS to a lot of files and folders, both on a client machine and a server machine. So keep in mind your company's policy on your ability as an IT professional to see different kinds of data on a say a manager's PC or anybody's PC, obviously you're going to be limited by NTFS on the server side. Just keep that in mind. It's very powerful, but keep in mind your policies for your company. The network tool is fairly decent. It allows you to see the status of all your network cards, gives you the IP addresses. I'm not super excited about it, but it's there and it's helpful at a glance. As in most cases with these tools, if you click an item in the tool, it has a detail pane that shows up and you can get more information. You can get its name, its MAC address, link speed, things of that nature, subnet, IP address, gateway, DNS information from, from that details pane. Now they have the process tool, which allows you to see your processes. You, you can come up to any column, click, and you can resort that column, which is really helpful. If you want to zero in on items that are using the most CPU, you can click at the top of these columns and it will sort those columns. This is real basic information. I don't know that I would get really excited about this, but at least I can glance at the processes that are running on that PC. And if I see something obvious, I'm probably going to remote in or use Process Explorer to do more diagnostics. If you needed to modify or look at a registry key, it's got a nice little registry exposure. It does allow you to add values, modify. This would be just for that tweaking of a registry setting that you may want to do without remoting in and using regedit. It does have a PowerShell front end to remote desktop right into that PC when you need to. It has a nice little quick view, a dashboard for your scheduled task. It allows you to create a scheduled task if you want to do it right here. It has a service tab, it allows you to see all the services. You can again, sort the columns. If you want to see what is running, what is stopped, you can stop, start, pause, and you can actually go into the configurations of each service. So all in all, 
to manage this piece of hardware. It's not bad. I mean, it's not the best tool I've ever seen in my life, but for a free administrative tool, it's not bad at all. Now, this is a virtual machine. And I can scroll through and it's got most of the things, the tools that we expect in a virtual machine. I do like the security and that we can come to the secure core section and we can make sure that as many security features that are built into operating systems today are either enabled or we can be alerted that they're not enabled. I'm going to connect to a domain controller and we'll take a look at the unique tools for the domain controller. Here's Active Directory. I don't know that I would get really excited about this dashboard into Active Directory, but you can do basic things in Active Directory with this tool. Because DNS is a part of Active Directory, I can see I have a DNS dashboard into my DNS that is on my domain controller. When I go to local users and groups, I expect it to say there is no such thing on a domain controller, and that's reassuring. Here we're looking at roles and features. Again, this is nice. This allows me to see what roles are available for this server, what roles are being are installed, have not been installed. This is the kind of information that I need as an IT professional to support this product. One tool that is found on the servers that is not found on the clients is the update tool, which I absolutely love because now I can look at the updates that are there and I can say, go ahead and install them. What's not to love? The storage tool on my server is very nice. It allows me to see all my disks and volumes. It allows me to see what's really going on as far as my disk subsystem. I have format, resize, a lot of things that I may want on a server that I don't need in a client. Now let's take a look at performance monitor. I had just read the Windows Admin Center blog site and they had had an article on the Windows performance monitor that has now been added to Windows Admin Center. And it looked really good and I was excited to get back in here and test it out. So let's take a look. I went ahead and I took and built a workspace. So I went ahead and created a workspace. And what I did here in this Perfmon duplicate, which you see is right here saved, I took the counters that are found by by default, when you launch Performance Monitor, all of these counters, there's three counters in memory, one counter in network interface, two in physical disk, and three in processor. And I just took those and just rebuilt that into Windows Admin Center Performance Monitor. Now it is a pain because you have to do this all manually. There's nothing in there by default. Now this is in preview mode. They may have a way that you can import something, I'm not sure. And I haven't honestly spent a lot of time in here to drive it and test it and kick the tires. So I may be missing certain elements. I'm not gonna throw sand on everything that Microsoft does because I really haven't spent enough time in here to do that. But let me show you, I've already got one workspace created and if I launch it, it's basically a duplicate of what you get by default in Performance Monitor already and you can kind of see. I've got my three counters for memory. Sometimes you have to play with it a little bit. If you want something other than a report view, in other words, your counter data is displayed as a report versus displaying this data as a real-time line graph or min max or a heat map. You have to kind of play. Sometimes it will let you, based on your counters, allow you to display it in different ways. In this case, it's in a graphical mode and there's my three memory counters. Here my ethernet total bytes is shown in a graph, a line graph. And so you can see it starts with now, which is real time, and then it goes up to five minutes. That's only got one counter here and that worked out pretty well. Down here, I've got two more counters for my physical disk. And again, it's what's known as report view. I can see my C drive and my D drive and my total. So again, that's, it's okay for viewing the data. It doesn't solve the problems that Performance Monitor has, as I covered in my video called Perfmon and PAL. Down below is, I've just got the processor. I've got two counters, percent interrupt time and processor time. And if you'll notice, it has, each counter has a color line that's different from the other. And again, it gives you that real-time view of the data. So I went out of Performance Monitor, came back and I'm going to start with a blank workspace. So let's out a counter. I'm going to choose right now, I'm running an 8K YouTube video on my browser. So let's go get a network adapter. So I'm going to get a network interface and 
instance, we're just going to select my Ethernet connection. And over here, I'm just going to, I'm going to come over here and choose line. And then over here, I'm going to choose counters. Now there's a couple ways. I, I find that these mouse over information drive me nuts. So hopefully they'll get that cleared up. I'm going to go ahead and select bytes received, bytes sent, and bytes total. And we'll go ahead and leave that with three counters. Notice each counter is given a different line color. So this is blue. This is a darker blue. This is a purple. And then over here, we see our line view, our real-time view of that data over time. And you see that it starts over here on the right as real time. And then over here on the left, it runs this real time view up to five minutes historically. So if I want to expand it, I've got to come down, add another counter. And you could see this is, you have to do this manually for every single workstation or server. I, I see that as a pain. It does have settings. If you come up here to settings, you can see you can choose your time range from five minutes to 15 minutes to six hours. So that's nice. And it has different color scheme, standard, high contrast, different fonts. So again, this is in preview mode. Personally, I'm very excited about Windows Admin Center as a tool for even my own home domain network. I haven't had the time yet to really test out all the features, but I'm really looking forward to maybe doing a follow-up video of the good, the bad, and the evil, as I have discovered using this extensively. As I mentioned before, this is really a nice management tool for server core. I had reluctantly installed a lot of servers with the desktop experience, simply because every time I needed to do something odd or different, I was struggling to find the PowerShell or some kind of MMC tool that would allow me to make that configuration or add that feature or function. With this web interface to server core, I don't see myself having to install any servers again with a desktop experience. Everything I need is right in one interface. If you come up to the top of the bar, there is a gear and you can look at some of the settings. Probably the most interesting is the extension. These are available extensions that plug in and give it more features and functionality. Some of them are manufacturers. If you're dealing with Dell, they have some extensions for Dell products. Fujitsu has some extensions for their products. HP has some for theirs, Lenovo. I hope to set up an Azure account, set up maybe a VM that I could then connect my premise management system to my cloud components and just see how well Azure is integrated into this tool. As always, I'll have video notes that you can download in the video description below, as well as the PowerPoint slides. Your comments and feedback is always welcome.